Hello everybody, welcome back. My next few videos are all going to be pen related in some form or fashion. It may be a new pen that I've turned. Actually there's two that I'm going to be assembling here uh, in a day or so and it might be just a review of that and it also kind of instructive on how those go together. But I'm also going to have a couple of videos in this next month on how I go about doing some things. How I go about trimming my pen blanks and then my CA finish as well. Both are probably a little different than most people, but it works for me. Now today, we're going to look at how I trim pen blanks. I don't use these barrel trimmers like a lot of people. I used to. But quite honest with you, I found them to be a pain. One, you have to keep these cutters sharp all the time. And two, if I trimmed anything other than a 7mm, which is what this mandrel fits into, you have to have these special inserts that fit inside whatever tube that you're trying to make the pin with. And to keep up with all of these inserts, it's a pain to me, and two, it's an added expense. So, kind of developed my own method for trimming pen blanks. And we'll look at that in just a minute. Another reason that I did that is because I've damaged pen blanks many, many times with these barrel trimmers. They're not sharp. It depends on the species of wood. It depends on your pen blank. A lot of things come into play. It depends on the speed of your drill press. There's so many things that come into play. But bottom line is, I damage pen blanks with it, so and they can be repaired. As a matter of fact, Bob over at RJB Wood Turners just did a few videos on how to repair pen blanks. So today we're going to look at how I go about trimming my pen blanks. Okay, the way that I square up my blanks is, well first of all, my, my technique requires that I probably cut the blanks a little closer on the tube than most people. So I, once I've pr drilled and I've inserted the tubes. I trim them up just real close before I get to this step. But what I do is I put a Jacobs drill chuck in the tail stock. I put my collet chuck on the head stock. And then I use a quarter inch shaft collet and this is what makes it all work I made this it's just got a quarter 20 bolt going through it I drilled it countersunk it and epoxied a piece of aluminum I made sure first of all this was this surface was flat was parallel to the lathe and then I epoxied a piece of aluminum down to it. That goes into the collet chuck. Nice and tight. And then, on the end, on the aluminum face, I keep a supply of 60 grit sticky back paper. And all I have to do is remove protective put that on now to fit this in into here I use a set of centering punches you've probably seen these before a set of punches from Harbor Freight or you can also get them from Penn State. You can get them on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. So you just select the one that gives you the best fit. That's a little loose. It's a 
little tighter. I like that. Chuck it up. I run it up where it's just almost touching. Notice I've got a little gap here. I don't, I don't butt it up against the sandpaper. And then it's just a matter of pressing it against it. Slide it out. Check it. Keep a little wire brush right here where I can just keep my sandpaper clean all the time. We're almost there. I just Try to rotate it. There. You can see the brass tube. We are absolutely 100% flush and flat. Now we just flip it over. Do the other edge. Almost. There we are. We can see brass tube all the way around. So that's it. Simple, inexpensive. Once you get your centering punches and things, you can. I can trim any size tube that I can get a centering punch going. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and hit that little red subscribe button. All my social media information is in the bottom. We really appreciate your support and until next time, be creative, be thoughtful, and be safe.